So let's talk about the emotion dominant subject in your subsequent interviewing strategy in tip number 95. Welcome back to 101 Interviewing Tips for Interviewers and Interrogators. This is Interviewing Tip number 95. I'm your host, Stan Walters. This time we're going to talk about the emotion dominant subject. First of all, there, there are, you can classify behavior types or general behavior patterns into four general groups. Uh, now, these are not concrete, solid groups that everybody is in a, you know, in a perfectly neatly fits in, into one or the other. Uh, it's pretty much how that they behave or they interact respond to the environment that's around them. Now, if you want to go back and look at some more in-depth information and, and do far better than we can do in just a few minutes we're going to spend together now, go back and look at the work of Dr. Carl Jung, J-U-N-G, Carl Jung, J-U-N-G. Talking about the early 20th century, he and Sigmund Freud were together in development of today's modern psychoanalytical, uh, psych psychoanalytical psychology, like a psychoanalysis, right? Mouthful. A lot of P's and A's and that thing. Um, Jung looked at the path of what we, he called the arch types. He pretty much uh, developed the ideas of introvert and extrovert and, and how people engage in the world and how the world often sees them. Now, subsequent to that, if you look in today's most modern work, the, the DISC system and in personality typing and a lot of our work in organizational psychology, you'll find the general source of this information. My objective for you here is to help you overcome the problem which is called consensus bias. We've talked about this before. We typically see other people and we believe they think and act and respond and solve problems and view the world and have the same beliefs and standards that, that we do. Interviewers that are successful, and we go way back to the beginning of our first part of the series almost a year ago, that the interviewers that are successful have mastered three things. Number one is a narrative-based interview. Practical kinetic interview and interrogation is a narr true narrative-based interview process. The objective at the end is not confession. That's the difference. We're in persuasion tactics, but persuading the person to be compliant and to give information. Big difference in the outcome. Second thing, um, the interviewer understands the subject's cognitive and emotional changes. Go back and look, about a year back, and look at our reaction behaviors of anger, depression, denial, um, bargaining, and in response behavior acceptance. Interviewers were successful understood those things. But the third piece was understanding the unique personality of the person they're talking to, that they engaged with them, they understood from their point of view through their eyes. So we're going to look at these, these four groups. Now, you won't find these named the way that I'm going to give them titles. It's just easier for me to remember. And your strategy is just a very slight adjustment in your language. Close enough will be just fine. But the purpose is for you to see the world, understand how this person thinks and solve problems and sees themselves, and adjust your strategy to that. So let's start with the first one. This, this is the emotion dominant, I call it. Now, the emotion dominant person, I'm not an emotion dominant person. Now, you say, what, well, Stan, you're very active. You tell us how you feel, all that kind of stuff. Emotion dominants don't do that. Emotion dominant subjects uh, respond to their world on a, a subjective level. They have to connect and personalize it. They, there's almost like a bonding that has to be going on. They tend to be quite um, uh, intuitive thinking. They, they, they look ahead as to what could happen and what's going to go on. Now, here's a critical piece that I want you to remember about them. They, they are slow, careful thinkers. I, now, slow doesn't mean dumb or stupid or, or anything like that. That's, that's not the concept. What makes it appear slow to decision is that they're running their problem in their mind in a loop. They run it over and over and over and over again, just like in a closed loop, and they're looking for that smallest detail, for that one piece of information that would solve the whole thing. So if, to them, peripheral details are quite important. Now, in just a moment, I'm going to put up a, a copy of the pocket guide here. Before we go too far in this, in the pocket guide, the second edition, I've expanded this section there on how to identify these types. The nine quick questions that you ask and you evaluate the subject and get a, a general assessment of what type of, of behavior personality you're talking to. And so if you, if you get that, look in that section, and I'll walk you through it in detail and help you much more quickly identify the type. The emotion dominance gain pain motivator. Their whole pursuit, what brings them gain or pain, is the presence or absence of stability. They want things smoothed out, they want things balanced, they want things on an even keel. Okay, so that's very important to them, and that's what they're striving for, their actions and reactions, is to take care of that stability phase. They tend to be quite good listeners, 
but they listen through their heart. They don't do well with, with uh, hostility. Now, they can become angry. They can be, they blow up, um, but it's, it's gone very quickly. They don't deal well with a lot of anger directed toward them. They tend to withdraw or shut down, if you will. Um, they like to have a, a quiet place to sit in and talk. They don't like to be exposed to everybody, like they're put on parade, you know, a perp walk or something like that. So you want to set up a private location when you interview them. Got that? Okay. Um, they tend to be pretty dedicated to a task. Uh, apparently have a fairly good memory and, and not like they're elephants or, you know, memory hounds, just like that. But they need to remember the things, what I tried in the past, what worked, what didn't work. More so than, than, than other people will do. And so they'll look back and see what they need to take care of. You know, the, this event now, what to do in the past that was similar. When you interview these folks, uh, you want to make, turn on the very human side. You want to connect with them. You want to be subjective, be very, very personal with them. Build in and play a lot on the emotional side of things. Now, not, but you talk about how people are upset, they're, they're concerned, worried, surprised, shocked, um, confused, and how this person has some semblance of uh, their actions. They can create stability by c talking and clearing things up so things don't get out of hand, so things don't uh, uh, get too far out of the reach and they can't do anything about a coming storm. They need to look ahead to see what's going to happen. The way you present your evidence to them. Remember our formula we looked at further. Go back and look at try a little P-A-S-S, -S, problem, agitate, solution, satisfaction. Point out the problems to them as if you were building a puzzle. So they need to see the case develop slowly, like an, if, if you're old enough to remember, a Polaroid or a Kodak instant photograph, and slowly see the case come together. They, they tend to give in to anticipation. They see where the case is going. So put it together one piece at a time and one image at a time within the puzzle. Deal with one thing, clear that up, move to the next one, clear it up, move to the next. If you leave too many things open, too many windows like on a computer, they don't do well with that. So slow down, take your time and let it slowly build and let them see the case develop. Let them see it occur. So think like a puzzle one piece at a time. What agitates them and, and uh, brings it home to them is the emotional side, is their involvement, and in how they need to create the stability. The, the solution that you offer them is the image of how things will be straightened out, rumors will be quelled, they get things back to balance and back to normal. So just take, take some time. Just one example. I think this would be like well, if you would interview Michael Jackson or someone of that thing. Now, anybody can do anything. There's no more men or more women or one or the other. Uh, no particular type of job. Look at the person's behavior when they're under the stress of the situation. That's the best time to tell, such as your interview. In the interview, they, they walk in, they have a, a pessimistic view. They're going to lose something in their mind. They just don't know how much or what they're going to lose. Okay? Um, so they, they've already almost kind of self-defeated. Then they, they eat their guilt. They're overwhelmed with it. They're overcome with it. So they typically uh, of all the personalities, have a little bit better body language just in reading emotion. Remember, body language is not really good for spotting deception, but it's good for the emotional output. So think through before you go in. We talk about the peace model. If they have an emotion dominant, capitalize on that emotional context, then demonstrate to them each piece. We need to solve this problem to get things back in balance, to put things back in order. And the solution is one that brings them satisfaction, the stability part of it. Take a look at the pocket guide. I think you'll find it uh, easy to use. I go through in greater detail a good nine-point test or quiz that you can use to figure out your personality. Then I spell out in great detail the strategy you want to use. See, emotion dominance don't think people listen to them. They're more than anybody else. They're great listeners themselves, but don't think anybody listen to them. So one simple tactic you learn is take your time and feed a little bit back of what they said to, uh, to you. Feed a little back to them before you're the next point. For example, see, and so that connects with them. So those little tips you'll find of great value. Be sure to hit the like button below. I know this is a little abstract, but you're going to spend some time studying on it, but it'll pay off big dividends for you. If you understand your subject like this and do the interview, you're talking about putting yourself in the top 95% of the interviewers in the country who don't even think this far, don't think this far ahead. So take advantage of that tool and see what you can do with the interview. And you'll be amazed at what, how productive it can be and how much connection you have with the subject. Please hit the like button, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, uh, Instagram, connect with me. Check our website. Be sure to go on the live list to find out about classes coming up. 
If you'd like to host a class or want to have a class custom designed for your agency or association, reach out to me. Let's talk about that. So until you see you next time for tip number 96, this is Stan Walters reminding you, be safe.